What's going on YouTube? My name is Alex. This is As The Cheese Gaming. I am on a quest to review every single Nintendo 64 racing game. Over two years ago, I told, took a look at Star Wars Episode 1 Pod Racer for the Nintendo 64, which was also later released for Game Boy Advance and Dreamcast. Let's revisit this game and answer the question, is it worth picking up and buying today and adding your collection? Star Wars Episode One Pod Racing, or Pod Racer for short, was developed and published by LucasArts with a North American release date of May 18th, 1999. This game was also available for the Switch and PlayStation 4 more recently. Pod Racer is a fast-paced, futuristic racing game that is based off the events from the Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace movie. In it, you could play in free play, tournament, or time attack with one of eight pods. When you play tournament, each race, you can earn something called nuggets, which are this game's currency. The more nuggets you earn, the better and better parts that you can buy from either the junkyard or the shop. In later races, you'll need to fully, or try to, upgrade your pod by upgrading areas such as your traction, your turning, or your air brake, just to name a couple. There's three total circuits in this game, and each are more difficult than the last. Now next, I'd like to touch on the controls in this game. All the controls for the pods are for the most part responsive, but it could take a little while to really get used to how the pod racers drive and move just because they're so floaty at times. I mean, when you go like off a big ramp, it, it takes a little bit to get used to, but no complaints here. Now, let's touch on the music and sound effects of this game. If you're a fan of the movies, of course being the Star Wars films, or specifically the Phantom Menace from which this game is based, I think you'll enjoy it overall. But, for sake of any copyright issues, I'm not going to feature any music in this review. All in all, I have no real complaints. My only minor nitpick is that there's just not a lot of, how would you say, sound effects in this game, as there's no ray, no, hmm, weapons, really. The one thing that there is, however, in this game is the ability to keep using boost like you see in some of this gameplay here. You charge up that meter on the bottom right corner. When it flashes yellow, you hit the gas, and then you can get a big burst of speed. Hold it for longer and longer, but eventually your engines will overheat. Overheat them too long, your engine will kept fu catch fire, and you'll have to repair it. So finally, let's answer the question. Is this game worth picking up and adding to your collection today? Well, that all really depends. If you want a good game that you could pop in for like 10-15 minutes, that's a budget option, then sure. This one's got a price charting price of about $10. But if you're looking for something that you can really sink your teeth into, then no, I would stay away. There's better games elsewhere, such as a personal favorite of mine, Extreme G. The biggest issue with this game, just once you beat and everything, there's no replayability. There's nothing left to do. So it kind of suffers from that. And also, there's no multiplayer mode. Thanks for watching, everybody. And until next time.